Shalom again, this is Daniel with Bless Israel Network, and uh, I wanted to bring you a further update on the situation in Israel and maybe talk a little bit more uh, a deeper level about um, the spiritual aspect of things. Um, just to uh, keep you current, uh, this recording is being made on Thursday, May 13th, and the situation has continued to escalate. Uh, Hundreds and hundreds of rockets are continuing uh, to be fired uh, and again uh, throughout uh, the Gaza Strip border communities as well as many of Israel's central communities and this marks a uh, distinct change from previous conflicts and also uh, there has been reports that um, riots continue uh, in several of the cities inside Israel. Uh, there was video of a Jewish mob uh, dragging an Arab man out of his car. Uh, I think this took place in Bat Yam, which is very near uh, Tel Aviv. And uh, truthfully, they beat this man to a pulp. You could see blood uh, all over him. Now, fortunately, he did not die. He was hospitalized in serious condition, and it looks like he will survive his injuries. Um, but these kinds of sectarian uh, riots are happening uh, in numerous cities around Israel. Uh, there was a plan for uh, right-wing, hardline Jewish demonstrators to march into the streets of Jaffa today and uh, conduct a very serious uh, demonstration which very likely would have resulted in violence or what have you but fortunately uh, the police uh, blocked off the area and from all uh, appearances it looks as though that has not happened uh, there was a group of uh, peace activists believe it or not the peace activists actually made their presence known um, and uh, they wanted to implore the potential demonstrators that were going to disrupt things uh, to stop their their conduct uh, the police actually told the police excuse me the police actually told the peace activists to leave the area uh, but it looks as though that the situation has uh, calmed down and that there is not going to be uh, any sort of uh, violence um, in, in Jaffa. Now, other developments which have taken place is there are reports that um, uh, some rockets were fired from Lebanon uh, into Israel. This is a first. In, in this conflict that there was any projectiles or rockets coming from Lebanon. Fortunately, they did not harm anyone. They were landed in the Mediterranean, from what I understand. There's also been some drones uh, that have been launched, which were intended to drop uh, explosives into Israel. My understanding is that uh, they have been neutralized. <coughs> Excuse me. Another report had some uh, terrorists from Hamas uh, breach the border uh, with uh, between Israel and Gaza in an attempt to get into Israeli cities and you know what they do they murder people so um, these are kind of the news on the ground updates okay now let's talk a little bit about things from a different perspective look at what Israel has been through in this past period of time we'll just say roughly six to 12 months. Israel has been through COVID-19. It looks as though they're coming out of COVID-19, but let's talk about that for a moment. What is COVID-19 all about? I mean, we've all heard the reports that this came from China, whether it was intentionally released or not, I don't know. I don't know if anybody really knows, but what is the real implications of COVID-19? And why are people running to get a so-called vaccine? You know, the so-called vaccine is not really a vaccine. If you look up the definition of a vaccine, this shot does not meet that definition. And contrary to what a lot of people think, the vaccine, if you will, whether it's Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, uh, Pfizer, or what have you, has not been officially approved by the FDA as a COVID-19 vaccine. It's been approved strictly on an emergency use 
basis. And the reason it hasn't been approved as a vaccine is because it was brought to market in lightning speed, nowhere near the amount of time that traditional vaccines take so they can measure the safety of it, both short term and long term. So people are running to get this vaccine, which by the way, if you study it, doesn't actually prevent you from getting COVID. So why they're calling it a vaccine, hard to say, but it's not really a vaccine. And people who are healthy don't need it. If your immune system is strong and you've got strong antibodies in your system, you don't need it. So what's the purpose of it and why all the hubbub and the control and the restrictions and the shutdowns and the mask wearing and everything else? Well, we're believers, right? I heard a collective yes. Do you think God may be trying to get someone's attention with this? Do you think God has seen enough of people turning away from him, both in Israel and around the world, but especially in Israel? Where are my people? Why aren't they depending on me? Why aren't they crying out to me? No, instead what they're doing is they're running to doctor's offices to get a shot that one doesn't even prevent them from getting this so-called disease. And two, there's no guarantee that they're gonna not suffer short or long-term consequences. So do you think maybe God was listening and God is watching and God is thinking, you know, maybe I need to send some sort of signal to the people around the world, but especially in my land of Israel, they're not dependent on me. They're high in technology, they've got a strong military, they've got a great economy um, and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, maybe I need to talk to them. Maybe I need to get their attention somehow. So here comes COVID, but what does Israel do? Do you think Israel gets the message and decides that they're going to listen and they're going to pray and they're going to turn away from earthly things? No, they jumped on the COVID deal. Netanyahu signed up Pfizer, said Israel will be a national laboratory for you. He conscripted every single man, woman and child in the nation of Israel without their permission to be guinea pigs. So now Israel is claiming they've turned the corner. Okay, so God says, you didn't listen to me. Next on the agenda, here comes a tragedy at Mount Moron on the holiday of Lagba Omer. The largest number of people died in a single event in the history of peacetime modern Israel. 45 people died, got trampled to death because there was not enough room to exit the only tunnel that let them out of the area where they were observing Lagba Omer. These were ultra-Orthodox Jews. Hmm, do you think they got the message? Hard to say. Again, these are zealots, okay? Ultra-Orthodox Jews are screaming, praying, sold out for Hashem, but they don't know Mashiach. They are messianic in nature, but are they crying out for Yeshua? No, they're not crying out for Yeshua. Now we've got the Gaza war. And now, as if that isn't bad enough, you've got Jews and Arabs fighting each other in the streets of Israeli towns. This has never happened before. You've got right wing claiming to be Orthodox religious Jews roaming the streets in gangs looking to injure and fight and destroy Arabs and Arab property. Is this the way God wants his people to act? I don't think so. I don't think so. So we are in a very difficult period right now. It could get worse. There is discussion that Israel is mobilizing personnel and equipment to make a large-scale incursion into Gaza. Now, I can tell you this, if that happens, it presents the potential for other problems. Keep in mind, Israel is a small country with a very strong army, yes, but a small country, 
It's got unfriendly neighbors on the north and the south. If Israel decides to send personnel and equipment into Gaza, that's going to stretch them. They're also devoting military personnel into many towns inside the country to help put down riots. So their resources are stretched there as well. So Iran is watching this. And if Israel is stretched by having an incursion into Gaza, and they're further stretched by having military personnel put down riots in the Israeli towns, what do you think Hezbollah is thinking up north? Up north? This might be the perfect time that Iran sends Hezbollah a message. Okay, Israel is busy in the south. Israel is busy in the center. Now you need to start attacking from the north. My friends, this is probably one of, if not the most serious times in the history of the country. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, honestly. I'm just giving you the update and thinking in terms of what is God doing here? Is God directing the people of Israel to come to him or rely on their own strength and military? Now, believe you me, I'll be the first one to say Israel needs to take out any enemy that comes against them. This is God's people, it's God's land, and they sure as heck aren't going to sit by and allow themselves to be destroyed. But at the same time, we need to ask ourselves, what is the overall message that God is trying to communicate? We need to think about that, we need to pray about that, and backing up a little bit, COVID-19 vaccine is not the answer. Taking care of yourself, good health, continuing your relationship with the Lord, that's the answer. COVID-19 is real, but it's not what we have been told it is. We have been boonswoggled. We have been misled by many, many, many experts. Why do you think after a year and a half into this quote unquote pandemic, there's still so much open disagreement on every single major issue about it? So you think about that. It's not been treated like a health issue. It's been politicized. So I will update as needed, but as of now, as of this recording on Thursday, the 13th of May, Israel has not yet gone into Gaza, but I have seen video of a personnel and equipment being taken to a central location and organized and mobilized uh, in case the green light is given for them to go in. Now, I know many of you are thinking that it might be a good thing, but at the same time, keep in mind what I said a, a minute ago, that it will stretch Israel's resources. And that's not necessarily a good thing, especially if Iran is sitting, directing this whole regional conflict. And keep one other thing in mind. Hamas and Hezbollah are all supported financially and militarily by Iran. And guess where Iran got a ton of money in order to supply these terrorists with weapons and funds? Do you remember President Barack Obama in 2015 when then Secretary of State John Kerry closed the deal that said was going to stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon? Well, that was a bunch of bunk. It just simply gave them an official path to get one. But included in that, aside from the U.S. dropping all of its sanctions against Iran, which is why they came to the negotiating table in the first place, because the sanctions were working, the U.S. gave Iran $150 billion. And so they've got U.S. taxpayer money, which they're using, that is supplying weapons that are killing Jews, many of them American Jews, in Israel. Think about that. Think about that. And right now, President Biden, if in fact it is the real President Biden, there's a lot of talk about what actually happened on Election Day. Okay, so I don't want to go down that road right now. That's for people that know a heck of a lot more than I do. But since he took office, whoever he is, $200 million has been sent to the Palestinian Authority. 
He has reopened the same U.S. taxpayer-funded pipeline to the Palestinians, and that money is being used for the Palestinian Authority to pay salaries of Islamic terrorists sitting in jails that have murdered Israeli citizens. Thank you, Joe Biden, for doing this. I hearken back to a statement I saw a couple of days ago that Donald Trump, the greatest president in the history of these United States, at least as far as Israel is concerned, he said flat out, the United States should always be on Israel's side. And my friends, we as believers need to take that to heart and that those are words that we should live by. We always need to be on Israel's side. So that's it for now. I'll update you uh, when I can. Again, my wife and I are in the U.S. And uh, if you're interested in having us come uh, for a visit, please let us know. Uh, and if you want to send a donation, blessisraelnetwork.com is our website. Uh, drop us a line. Get in touch. I'll talk to you again as needed. Shalom. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in an excellent book about COVID-19, which really gets into the prophetic and uh, spiritual meaning and implications and the whole nine yards of what COVID-19 really means and what God is trying to say, uh, we can recommend an excellent book by Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira. It's called The Besorah According to COVID-19, and I'll put an image of it at the end of this video. Please consider getting it.